Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler, and I want to talk to you about Unit 1.1 for my Algebra 2 class. And we'll start off with understanding domain and range. So a lot of this should be review from last year from your Algebra 1 class. But we have y equals x squared plus 2. That graph looks like this, so it's a regular parabola because it was x squared. But it's shifted up 2 because of that plus 2. And we were curious what the domain is. So what values can you substitute in for x or our x values? And in this case, that's all real numbers. We can plug whatever we num number we want into this x. It could be a negative number, it could be a positive number, it could be zero even. Zero squared is still just zero. And then we add two to it. All of that is perfectly fine. We can also see that based off of our graph. These arrows keep going left and keep going right. So eventually we hit all of our x's in both directions. So we're gonna start off by writing this in the set builder lo um, notation. So if it's a set, it's gonna have these squiggly brackets. And we have, it's all x's, such that x is an element, so that's like a half a u, or half a circle, I guess, with a line in the middle, real numbers, and that's the symbol for real numbers, two vertical lines, and then like a regular r. And these squiggly brackets, you could do it like an s, and then a 2, and then on this side, a 2, and then an s, to get a, a basic shape for this, those squiggles. And this is set builder notation. We're also going to do this in interval notation. So if I'm saying all real numbers, that means I go from all these negative numbers to all the positive numbers. That's negative infinity comma or two positive infinity. Because I can't actually be at infinity, I have to do a soft bracket. A hard bracket means we're at that location. We'll see that here when we do the range. So what values come out, or what are our y values? So if I plug a number into this, even if it's negative, I square it. Well, now it's going to be a positive number. So a positive number plus 2 is always going to be positive. So that tells you right there we're not going to have any negative numbers. If you look at our graph, it's a little bit easier to tell. We start off at a positive 2, and we go up from there. So y must be greater than or equal to 2. But we have to keep our notation, so we start end with the squiggly bracket. We start with the squiggly bracket. We have to say what letter we're talking about. We're talking about y's. So we have a set of y values such that y must be greater than or equal to 2. The other way of writing that is an in interval notation. Interval notation. And we start off at 2, and we go up, or we go to infinity. I can never be at infinity, so I use a parenthesis there. But I can be at this 2. I am right there at 2. So I use a solid bracket. I think about it like I can be there so I can sit on that chair. So I can sit on this chair. It looks nice and sturdy. But I would slip right off of this one. I would fall right off, so I can't be there at infinity. A tank starts a road trip with a full tank of gas. The equation y equals 34 minus 0.0714x represents the number of gallons y. So y is gallons left in the trunk to the number of miles the car has traveled. So the number of miles the car has traveled is our x. And it's represented by this graph right here. We have to find our x values and our y values. And in this case, we can pick it up pretty well. This one, you know, it's between, that's a 30 and 35. And it's towards the top, I don't know, maybe it's 33, 34-ish. Then over here, we're between 400 and 500. That one's a little harder to pick out. So let's use our formula. When we're finding x, intercepts, or x values, those are used interchangeably, we're going to substitute y equals 0. So for this formula, now I'm going to say y equals 0, so it's 0 equals 34 minus 0.0714x. Solving for x, I subtract my 34 over. Now it's negative 34 equals negative 0.0714x divide by the negative 0.0714 on both sides. So I'm just going to do one big line so I don't have to write it twice. And x equals negative 34 divided by a negative 0.0714 gets me 476.19. And x represented the number of miles the car has traveled. And this actually can be written like a coordinate point, just like it would be right here. 
our x is the, the positive 476.19, and my y value is 0. And that makes sense, right? We substituted y equals 0 in. So 476.19 comma 0 for my y. Now let's do y-intercepts, or our y values. Now we're going to substitute in x equals 0. So y equals 34 minus 0 0.0714x. Well, if x is 0, sorry, that's kind of sloppy. That's a 0 in parentheses right there. What's well, 34 minus 0? Hopefully, you picked up on that being 34. So we cross right there at 34. That coordinate point then would be 0, because that's what we plugged in for x, and our y is 34. Now, the x-intercept, x-value, has another thing. This is also called our zero of the function. So that's the zero of the function. That's our x-intercept. And it's also our x-value. It's all kinds of important things. Our y-intercept, uh, 0, 34, is also just called y-value. It doesn't have any other cool names, like zero of the function or anything. All right. Example 2. Now we're looking at positive and negative intervals across this function here. So the function is positive. Where am I positive? Well, positive is going to be above the graph because we're curious about y values when we're looking at if something's positive or negative. So when I am above the x-axis, I'm positive. When I am below it, I'm negative. So in this case, I am positive from negative infinity over here all the way up to the 2. So I'm going to write that over here. From negative infinity to 2, I am positive. And from 4 here to infinity, I am positive. So from 4 to infinity. Well, can I ever be at negative infinity? No. Or positive infinity? No. So I'm going to use the soft parentheses because I can't be at that location. But what am I doing at 0? Am I positive? Or sorry, uh, right here at 0 on my y. Am I positive or am I negative there? Well, 0 is not positive or negative, so I can't be positive at 4 or at 2 either. So these are all exclusive, or the parentheses. So where am I negative? Well, that's going to be the other part. That's between 2 and 4. Between 2 and 4. And this is interval notation. And again, if my height is 0, I'm not positive or negative. So I am parentheses. I'm not including the 2 and the 4 in what is negative. All right, off to our next one. This one is where are we increasing and where are we decreasing? So I am increasing on an interval from down here up to here. So I don't care about the y values, how short I am or how tall I get, but it's more about where does this happen in time. Time is usually our x-axis. So that would be from negative infinity all the way up to 0. That's where I stop going up. So from negative infinity up to 0, I can never be at infinity. What's happening at 0 on my x-axis? Well, I'm stopped. I'm turning around. I'm not, I'm not going up and I'm not going down. So that's a soft parenthesis. I can't be there. And I'm decreasing from 0 to infinity. Can I ever be at infinity? No, so it has to be a parenthesis. What am I doing at zero? Well, I'm neither increasing nor decreasing, so I can't be there. All right, off we go. Now the average rate of change over an interval. I drew a crappy picture, but more than anything, you need to see this part here, so I'm gonna zoom in on that. It really means that we care about our change in x's and our change in y's. Delta, or the triangle, is change. So our change in our x's and our change in our y's. This is exactly the same as slope. Average rate of change is really fancy lingo for slope. So this just means slope. And you've seen that before. You know what that is. We often call it m. So average rate of change, average rate of change equals slope equals m equals, I'm going to put it right here, change in y values over change in x values 
we often write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. There are some times we want to write it even a little bit fancier than this. So instead of y's, we write f of x's. So our y value that came from our x2 coordinate minus our y value that came from the x1 coordinate divided by x2 minus x1. All of this, again, is just fancy words for slope. So if you can find the slope of something, you can find the average rate of change over an interval. The interval part is just going to tell you what your x's and your or what your x's are. Sometimes you have to plug those in to figure out what your y values are. All right, I believe that is it. That is it for me. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please click that like button that's uh, what down over here somewhere. Subscribe so that you can see more great videos like this. And if you're one of my students and you still have some questions, please shoot me an email. Let me know. Have a great day, everybody, and I wish you well.